In this video, we will discuss mitral stenosis, its etiology, pathology, and clinical features along with X ray features. It occurs in 40% of patients with rheumatic fever. It's decreasing in developed countries. Other causes of mitral stenosis are congenital mitral stenosis, rheumatoid arthritis, left atrial myxoma, infective endocarditis, and SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus. So, how long after rheumatic fever symptoms of mitral stenosis? develop. Most patients exhibit symptoms in the fourth decade, that is 20 years after the attack. What's the cause of narrowing of the valve orifice? Mitral valve leaflet is thickened due to fibrosis and calcific deposits. Cordy tendony fuse and shorten. What's the effect of calcification in MS? Immobilization of the leaflets and thromboembolism. What's the shape of the mitral orifice in mitral stenosis? Funnel shaped or fish mouth appearance. What's the normal mitral valve orifice size and in mild, moderate and severe MS? Normal size of mitral valve orifice. Mitral valve area is 4 to 6 cm square. In mild mitral stenosis, it's 1.5 to 2.5 cm square and in that pulmonary pressure is less than 30 millimeters of mercury. In moderate mitral stenosis, orifice size is 1 to 1.5 centimeter square and pulmonary pressure is 30 to 50 millimeters of mercury. And in severe mitral stenosis, the MVA is less than 1 centimeter square and the pulmonary arterial pressure is more than 50 millimeters of mercury. Left atrial pressure of 25 millimeters of mercury is required to maintain a normal cardiac output in severe MS. When size is reduced to less than 2 cm square, then blood is propelled from left atrium to left ventricle only by elevating the left atrial pressure. When does cardiac output decreases in mitral stenosis? In moderate mitral stenosis, when the size is 1 to 1.5 cm square, the cardiac output is normal at rest, but the increase is subnormal during the exertion. And in severe mitral stenosis, when the size is less than 1 cm square, pulmonary vascular resistance is markedly increased and the cardiac output is subnormal at rest. So in moderate MS, the cardiac output is normal at rest, but in severe MS, it's subnormal at rest. And the murmur disappears because of the stenosis and stiffness and calcification of the valve. When does dyspnea occur in MS? An LA pressure of more than 25 mmHg causes increased blood flow across the mitral orifice causing dyspnea and in severe cases orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. When there is an increase in the right ventricular and diastolic pressure and volume in severe MS, pulmonary arterial pressure is elevated at rest and increases further in exercise causing elevation of the right ventricular and diastolic pressure and volume. What's the cause of pulmonary hypertension? in mitral stenosis. Number one, increased LA back pressure. Number two, pulmonary arteriolar constriction. And number three, interstitial lung edema. So these are the causes of pulmonary hypertension. What are the effects of pulmonary hypertension? In mild cases, pulmonary pressure is less than 30 mmHg. In moderate, it's 30 to 50. And in severe cases, it's more than 50 millimeters of mercury. Severe pulmonary hypertension causes right ventricular enlargement, tricuspid and pulmonic regurgitation, and right heart failure. What's the cause of hemoptysis? Increased left atrial pressure leads to pulmonary venous hypertension, rupture of the pulmonary bronchial venous connection. That causes hemoptysis. Thrombi originate in the left atrium in mitral stenosis. That cause recurrent emboli. And thrombi or embolism may also be a presenting feature in mild mitral stenosis. Mild mitral stenosis is asymptomatic. So in asymptomatic mild mitral stenosis patients, embolization may be the presenting feature. Incidence of emboli is 10 to 20% more in atrial fibrillation. And number two, fibrous thickening of 
of the alveoli and pulmonary capillaries decreases the pulmonary compliance and lung volumes. Now the examination finding in mitral stenosis. Why in mitral stenosis there is a prominent A wave and Y descent. A wave is due to prominent or strong atrial contraction because of pulmonary hypertension or tricuspid stenosis and Y descent is due to gradual pressure decline after the mitral valve opens. Palpatory findings in mitral stenosis and large right ventricular tap along the left sternal border and number two diastolic thrill at the cardiac apex. Auscultatory finding first heart sound and pulmonary sound accentuated. Opening snap on expiration other condition that have opening snap is tricuspid stenosis. In mitral regurgitation the first heart sound is reduced or absent. The murmur is diastolic best heard at the cardiac apex and on left lateral position. Shorter the duration between the opening snap and the murmur the severe the mitral stenosis. When does systolic murmur occurs in mitral stenosis? Number one in pure mitral stenosis and number two if there is associated tricuspid regurgitation due to pulmonary hypertension. Associated pulmonary regurgitation causes diastolic rumbling murmur, Graham steel murmur. Now the EKG findings in mitral stenosis. P wave changes, tall peak T wave in long lead 2 in left atrial enlarged and upright P wave in lead V1 when there is right atrial enlargement, pulmonary hypertension and tricuspid stenosis complication. QRS complex shows RV enlargement, right ventricular enlargement. Echocardiography findings in mitral stenosis. Number 1, mitral orifice size and extent of valve leaflet restriction. Number two, thickness and distortion of the subvalvular area. Number three, it shows cardiac chamber size. Number four, echo estimates left ventricular function and pulmonary artery pressure. And number five, transesophageal echocardiography excludes the presence of left atrial thrombi. Now what are the x-ray chest features in mitral stenosis? Earliest change is a straightening of the left upper cardiac border, pulmonary artery dilatation. And number three, posterior displacement of the esophagus by enlarged LA. Curly's B line and why do they occur? Due to the lymphatic edema mainly in the mid and lower zone when left atrial pressure is more than 20 millimeters of mercury.